Good morning, guys. How are y'all today? Pretty cool outside today, so I'm getting me a fire started up here, and we're going to do a little cooking. Now, for you ones who ain't been following along, may not have seen my recent video of my outside stove set up here. So I'm going to first tell y'all a little bit about this outside stove. This here is nothing more than an old insert out of an old fireplace out of an abandoned home. They make good stoves, good fireplace inserts, but if you got a, can come across an old one like this here, makes great sitting up outside. And this here's a Crafts brand, C-R-A-F-T, Craft. There's your vents down here, and you got your dampener. Now these inserts, they made for fireplace, so back on the back, you see I got it into a six inch pipe going up. I had to make me a little fitting back there to reduce it. It had a slot about three and a half inches wide by about 13, 15 inches long. That's where your dampener opens and closes. But they sell that little piece, but I made mine. Converted it to a six inch pipe going up. But what's nice about these inserts, especially if you can find one with a blower on it. These inserts here has a blower. Now this ain't the blower that come on this insert. The one that come on it had a hose run over here and you set a little, had a little box with a little squirrel cage motor in it. You set it on your heart and it would suck your warm air that's in your house, blow it into this stove box and the hot air comes out these two vents on each side. Well, the old motor was out on this one. And I was out here and I said, well, I don't need that blower, not for just sitting outside, but then I got thinking one day. I just got my leaf blower and I stuck it right here in that vent. And when I did, man, that hot air come out of one hand, shot all the way across under the table over yonder. I said, well, that there be plumb nice. So I got to looking out my shed and I had this squirrel cage fan right here. But now that's a 12 volt. I don't know what it came off of. I just happen to still have it in my shed. So I brought it out here and I rigged me up a way to mount it right there on that, where that pipe connected. And it worked good. But it's sitting here and we see she outside is sucking cold air. Well, when it's sucking cold air, of course, that's going to cool your hot air down a bit before it comes out. I said, well, I need to come up with something a little better. Well, up under the bottom, I got this insert sitting on two cinder blocks. So it's got a space under it about 18 inches deep. So I closed that in with two pieces of metal between them cinder blocks. And this little hose right here. It's nothing more than a dryer bin hose for clothes dryer. It's the, it's the little metal one, flexible one. I cut me a hole through that piece of metal and connected it so now the return air is good hot air because it's like an oven up under the bottom of that insert. So it's sucking hot air, blows it into your stove, and then it blows it out. Now that's why I got the battery sitting over here because this is a 12 volt. Guys, when you plug it up and you get that fire good and hot, y'all see I'm just now starting my fire, but that's still good hot air. I'm gonna get a infrared thermometer here after my fire gets hot and we're gonna show y'all how hot this thing's cooking. But today's video, guys, that's, that's just a little part of my setup here. And that's just how I got mine set up outside. It ain't gotta be an insert. It can just be a wood stove of any kind. But today's video is how do you cook on top of a wood stove? Well guys, the best way to cook on top of a wood stove is out of cast iron. And one of the best things you can have when you're cooking on that is a cast iron Dutch oven. And they come in all different sizes. That's my biggest one and I think I got one that's a little smaller than that and then a smaller one. But once you get your fire going in your wood stove, this is going to get so hot 
when you cooking, depending on what you cooking, you may not want it to cook so fast. You don't want it setting straight on top of this. Now what I got, and it works very well, I'm gonna set this to the side for the moment. So what I got here is nothing more. Let me make sure that ain't too hot for me to grab yet. That's just a front dish rotary off of a video. What's good about them is they hold heat very well. They got holes already in it, and it's got a space there that gets you up off of there. Now, if that's too thick, you could use something like just a flat piece of metal. Now, some of you may not recognize what that is. That's called a pancake. That's something you use out in the oil field. But I can set it up there like the other day I had it sitting up there just with my small one on there. But now it was cooking too fast. So that's when I went and I got that rotary and that rotary there worked just right the other day. Of course, you're going to want to keep your fire as it, depending on what you're cooking as your wood burns down, it's going to start losing heat. But me outside on a cold day, I'm always coming by hand throwing another log on the fire. So I keep my hands warm. I can go do whatever I want to do and come up here and warm up. My lunch or supper's cooking. This here's going to be supper because this here's going to cook for several hours. But my fire's doing looking pretty good. So we're going to set our Dutch oven on there, guys. And right now, you can see my fire just getting started. And the outside of this doors on this thing is anywhere from 160 to 200 degrees. Now, I'm going to wait about 30 minutes, and I'm going to come back with y'all, and we're going to check the heat on this pot, because this pot ain't even got no heat, because I just set it on there. That pot's at 120 degrees right now. I personally want to keep my pot anywhere from like 275 to 350 myself. Now, yes, it's going to be cooler on the top, but I ain't got my stuff in there. I ain't telling y'all what's cooking yet. Y'all going to have to hang on to see this. <laughs> but my, my stuff that's in the pot is only from here down, and I got it good and full of juices so it won't cook dry. So all I'm concerned about is this temperature on the bottom of this pot. Which right now, see, that's already up to 180 degrees. Top of that, top of that heater right there is shooting up there at 280 to 320 degrees. That's why you got to have a spacer between there. If it starts cooking faster and I want it right there, I'm gonna raise it up and I'll put this other piece of pancake Sorry for that, guys. For you who don't know, I call that a pancake. I put it between there. Now, another good thing that works on top of these old stoves, if you got an old gas stove or can come across a gas stove and get that good cast iron, like a uh, the burner that your pot sits on, what's it called? The grate off the top of an old stove and have a couple of them sitting up there to set, you, set your pots on. But this will get hot enough that you can set a cast iron skillet straight on top of there. And after you get your fire going good, you can fry meat on right on top of it. I done tested it out. I just didn't do a video on that that day. I wanted to play around, make sure I had all my stuff together before I started trying to show y'all how, how to do it. Now, I know back years ago in the camp, we've done stuff like this before, but it was a it wasn't just an insert, it was actually an old wood stove that you pulled out the top lid and could set your pot on it and kind of kind of they was built for cooking on. But you can cook on these wood stoves just like this, guys. But what we're going to do, I'm going to just, like I said, I'm going to get back with y'all about every 30 minutes and we're going to check our heat, see what's going on. And I want this here to cook. It really don't matter. I want it to cook 
slow, as long as this cook is slow. The longer I can cook this slow, the tender it's gonna get. And I like cooking stuff for about three and a half, four or five hours sometimes. Just depends on my temperature and how big the meat is. And I know you're still wondering what kind of meat's in that pot. You still gonna have to wait and see. But I'll get back with y'all in just a little bit. We are gonna go on and check the temperature coming out of this. Now, I don't know how true a reading this is gonna be on the air, but when I shoot this, it's still gonna be hitting the metal in there. But that's showing 300 degrees, 275, 268, 295. 217 on that one, 250, and 260. And that, the fire ain't, the fire ain't going good and made good coals yet. That's just going to get hot. Matter of fact, I need to poke my fire up there a little bit. Throw me some more wood and get my fire going good. So I'm gonna throw me some more kindling wood on there and another log to get it going better and I'll get back with y'all. That there gets burning it ought to last a little while. Then I ought to have some good coals to put a big, good oak log on there then. All right, guys, it's been 30 minutes. My pot's only up to like 150. But the little disc down there is at 315. So what I'm going to do... We're going to set this Dutch oven off. And we're going to set this thin plate up there. And go another 30 minutes and check it. Now the other day when I cooked on this, I had that small Dutch oven, but this big Dutch oven... May need a little more heat to get it up there. Now I'm gonna go on and tell y'all what we cooking in this pot here is a deer shoulder. And that's why I got such a big pot so the whole shoulder, bone and all, just fits right down in there. Now I'm cooking this in and I'll show y'all after a while after it cooks what it looks like. But I just put me some barbecue sauce, watered down, salt and pepper, some onions, some peppers cut up in there. And we're going to make shredded barbecue out of that deer shoulder. But as big as it is, and plus it was still cold because it just thawed. So I'm going to have to get my heat on up and then I have to watch it until the heat starts going up above 350 on this pot. Then I may have to go back to the big spacer. But this is what you're learning how to cook on a stove. You got to you got to play with it and adjust your heat to get it to where you can cook good. Now you can see the fire is burning good. But the more wood goes in there, the more coals gets in there, also the hotter that fire is gonna get. So we got two things going on here. The fire just being started up. Ain't as hot as the fire with the deer shoulder in there with just being thawed. And sometimes I'll put it in there and it won't be thawed through and through because it'll thaw as it slow cooks. I've done that before in a many a time put it in a crock pot. Matter of fact, I have put one in there froze before. Turn the crock pot on, have it set on 12 hours all day on low. And by the time I come in, see it's done thawed and then cooked. So with that being cold, we just got to play with it to adjust our heat. But that's what this video is about, learning how to cook on a wood stove.
So we're going to check back here in about 30 more minutes and check our temperature and stuff again. But right now, I can't remember what the temperature was a while ago, but I just opened that door. But now see, that's, that's showing up for around 400 degrees now. Fire's getting hot. Ooh, yeah, it's blowing hot actually. You can't hold your hand up close, it'll burn you. Yeah, see, that's, that's blowing 350 degree air. 370. Now on the bottom, 220. That's 370 on that side. 396. So it's blowing some good hot air. But for cooking purposes, we don't want to blow air. That's just when it's sitting out here and it's cold, you can turn that on. Like I said, it'll blow that air right up under your table and keep everybody sitting around the table warm. But I'll get back with y'all here shortly and we're going to check our temperatures and continue on. Mm -hmm. Alright guys, it's been about 30 more minutes and our heat's coming on up there. It's about 225. Top there staying around 350. Fire's burning good. As a matter of fact, I didn't put another log on the fire. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna close these vents. Just a little bit. And I'm going to go in here and give me a bite of sandwich for lunch, and I'm going to take me a good old nap. So don't let my snoring disturb y'all, and then when we come back, we'll check on this again, and I bet everything's going to be come on up to temperature. Things going to start bubbling in there. And all I'm going to have to do is just continue on about what I want to do and let her cook. But guys, I ain't no expert at this. But I just want to do a video on how you cook on a wood stove. Now, like I said, back in the day, at the campsite, my dad and grandpa and all them, they would set stuff on the heater and cook it in pots and stuff. And it ain't like I was doing this. All my life, I had an electric stove or a gas stove to cook on. And even at, even at the camp, I was in a camper. I didn't have to do this. But I just enjoy this kind of stuff. And I think it's something that people need to know how to do in case they need to depend on it one day. Like I said, but what's your main thing you're going to need other than your wood stove of whatever type it is, it could be built out of anything, is you need you some good cast iron cookware. Dutch ovens, skillets. Main thing is Dutch ovens. Because you can fry in that Dutch oven. Just leave the lid off and act like it's a skillet. But anyway, I'm going to go eat me a bite of sandwich. I'm going to go kick back in that chair. I don't know, I might get this camp right here and take me a nap so the old lady won't be in there making racket and waking me up. But we're going to get back and check on her after a while. All right, guys, I done got my nap and I'm back. This thing says that's 250 degrees, but I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know if it's 250 degrees or what, but it's been about three and a half hours. And I'm going to get you over here and show you this deer shoulder's done. But there's the deer shoulder. So whether that heat thermometer gun is correct or not, the meat is done. Try and get me a little piece off here. Guess I could do this a little better if I'd lay this lid down over there, wouldn't I? 
But we're going to sample a piece of this old doe shoulder. Yep, that's doe. Y'all wonder how I know that doe? Because I very seldom kill a buck deer. <laughs> guys, right, right there. Good and tender. Again, cooked faster than I was expecting. I never did put no wood, no more wood on the fire after that last time. Cause I, like I said, I went in there and ate my lunch and took me a nap. So all in all, let's see. This here, three and a half fires. That's how long this is took that shoulder to cook. Now deer shoulder, for you who don't know, I'm talking about the right here on the deer, not his hind quarters back there. But a shoulder, it ain't, you know, it, it would take, it would take longer to cook a, a deer ham or a, or a big chunk of chunk roast. You you might cook a little longer, but a deer shoulder, it's, it ain't as much meat on it. That's why you see it you seen the bone there, and when it cooks, it draws up. But you can go in there and pull that meat off that bone right there. Take it totally off the bone, put it in your chopper, or just shred it up with a fork and knife, and put you some barbecue sauce on it, and make barbecue sandwiches. That's what we're gonna do with this right here. Make some good eating. But when you're cooking like that on this, it's better to put it in a lot of juice so your meat won't get, get dry when it's cooking. So I always put plenty of juice in there, just season that juice up all as far as just cooking. But guys, I was pretty happy with the outturn there. But I finna have to throw some more logs on the fire if I'm gonna stay outside because it's cloudy. Temperature is dropping. But I appreciate y'all watching. Some of you hadn't ever seen no cooking on a wood stove or how you cook on a wood stove. That's how that's how you doing. Like again, I ain't claiming to be no expertise at nothing. That's one thing about me, I ain't good at nothing. <laughs> I might I might can do a little bit of everything, but I ain't good at anything. But that's how it is, guys. I just want to do a little video showing y'all how to cook on your old wood stove. I'm sitting here, it's getting cooler and cooler. I guess I can turn that, yeah, buddy. Y'all feel that warm air coming right on over under y'all's feet. You hook that fan up. It makes a world of difference. Boy, that feels good. But I believe I still could have cooked that if I'd have left it sit on that thicker thing, it would have just cooked, took it a little longer and a little slower, which is really what I was wanting. This hair got ready quicker than I thought it was going to get ready. I was going by this temperature gun, and I just... I don't guess it needs to be that hot to cook. Not if you're going to cook long and slow. I'm gonna go grab us another log and put on the fire. Put that old song, put another log on the fire. Take me up some bacon and some beans. That's all I remember. But I can make up some stuff. Put another log on the fire. Cook me up some bacon and some beans. We all sit around the fire, yeah. Out here in our dirty blue jeans. Yeah, I told you I can make up some. That's the thing about me, I can't remember the words to songs. You 
sing them old songs with the radio all day long. Then when I start trying to sing them by myself, I play them on the guitar playing around, I can't remember. And they might not catch back up. I should have done woke up and put another log on the fire, ain't it? It might catch up here in a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'll go around and get a couple pieces of that pine too before I throw on each side here. Mm -hmm. take the meat here in the house and I come back out here but there ain't kitchen back up I take my little torch there stick back under it and get it going again I thought I'd go get on the deer stand this afternoon but that wind's blowing so hard right out of the north I don't think I care to go down there I'm all about this sitting around the fire and enjoying the camp. I guess cause back in the day when we was all, when I was all really into hunting, I'd go get on my stand for daylight and sometimes I wouldn't come out of the woods till after dark. And I guess it just caught up with me as much hunting as I did in all the years. Now I just don't care to go sit in no tree or no stand. I just soon set up here at my little heater and act like I'm camping because that's really what I got set up out of here is a little campsite in my backyard if you won't know the truth. I sit out here and I just feel like I'm at the camp. Only, and it ain't much different than the way I used to camp because I camped and hunted 95% of the time I'd, I'd be hunting, I'd be by myself. I'd go camping and stay five to nine days. I remember one time at Thanksgiving, I stayed, it was seven nights. Seven nights, eight days, I stayed by myself right through the Thanksgiving week. And I think I seen two people, other, other than when I brought deer out to take them to the processor, I'd go back and get on the stand, and I think I seen two or three people that week. And that was other hunters just coming in and out of the woods. But ain't nothing like it used to be about hunting. They got so many rules and regulations, and you can't do this, and you can't do that, and you about got to have a suitcase to tote all the papers they want you to have with you when you go hunting. Got to have a permit for this, and a tag for that, and an ink pen in your pocket. If you ain't got an ink pen, they can write you a ticket for an ink pen. Yeah, I'm serious. You ain't even got to kill a deer. If a daggone game warden comes in the woods, and you ain't got an ink pen, he can write you a ticket for hunting not having an ink pen in your pocket. Cause they say if you're hunting and you, and you kill a deer, you're supposed to admittedly tag that deer before you even move it. You ain't even supposed to drag that deer to your four-wheeler. And trust me, I know, I got a ticket for doing that. Right out in the middle of the woods for not having my tag filled out and tagged on my deer before I got it out to my four-wheeler. So all the new days, rules, regulations, the way people are, I just don't care about hunting no more. What little bit of hunting I do just right here around my house. But thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed this little video got a little bit of a talk around the campfire here about the sorry old days we living in <laughs> but if you agree with me give me a thumbs up if you don't agree with me i don't care if you give me a thumbs down it don't make me a bit duty that way we can just kind of 
you can look on my video here and see how many views it is and how many thumbs up and how many thumbs down it is, and that'll kind of give you an idea of what we're, what we're dealing with, won't it? <laughs> but thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day. God bless. See y'all next time. Guys, that's what the shoulder meat looked like after I pulled it off the bone. So tender you could just grab it with a fork and grab the bone and slide it right out.